What's up guys, I'm Shannon Aikow, Counts Customs. Check out Bill's Cool Projects on YouTube. Take it easy. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to part six of the, the build here on the uh, replica Mercedes 1929 SSK. And uh, see I got the steering all painted and cleaned up nice. That turned out really good. Um, I got my radiator back um, from Rebuild. It was full of stuff from the mice, um, seeds and straw and all kinds of stuff. And they had to take the whole tank apart and core and redo everything so I have that ready to go. But uh, worked on the pedals and uh, got everything really looking good. The clutch is looking good. I have the stop in. I have it mounted, all greased up. And then what I was able to do is get an emergency brake cable coupler um, from uh, O'Reilly's, uh, which just clips onto the ball. And on the back here, uh, the ball just slips through and then hooks on here. And then I was able to modify this a little bit and drill and put a heim joint here into the linkage. So now everything works nice and nice and smooth, pushing it in. And then I've got my stop up here, so I just have a little bit of clutch movement before the throw rod bearing makes engagement with the pressure plate, which is good. Got the brake cable in, um, got the keeper pin, I think that was in the last video, but I did add uh, a spring onto it. I used an extra one of my brake line clips and welded it onto this cross support, put the spring on, so then that way it holds the, the brake pedal back. Um, towards the firewall. So uh, just keep a little bit of tension on it. So I'm good there. Next thing is the pedal location. So I sat the seats in here and I'm gonna have to modify the pedals just a bit. Um, but to do that, I need to get in the floor pan lining. I got the, a neighbor coming down to help me lift this in. So I'm probably gonna have to take the pedals back off again. And then I'll put the liner in and then put the seats back in, get up in here and then uh, see where I want pedals and if I need to modify the pedals at all bend them um, I can heat them up with my torch uh, cherry red and then just bend them wherever I want them to be so but I got to get the liner in first to do that and I've got the steering wheel to go in here in a bit um, with the adapter and I'll show you how to pull the steering wheel off if you want to upgrade your old uh, steering wheel on your older car there that doesn't have airbags and uh, so that's about it but uh, Let's get to it. Thanks for subscribing. I know you want to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there. Like the video. Hit the like button. Uh, that helps the algorithm on YouTube. pretty good so the pedals were unusable in the position the brake was down in here and then the clutch was like too close to the brake you need to have separation so I measured on my Volkswagen thing and my Super Beetle and uh, I wanted to be about eight inches to the center off the deck on both pedals and then four and a half inches apart and then I want about three and a half inches to the gas pedal, which I haven't done yet, and then set back in into the hole here. Um, so you saw I torched this with a acetylene torch, heated it up, bent it uh, over to the left, and then bent it down. And then I uh, welded, I just have a tack now, I'll pull it off and weld all the way around. But I uh, cut the pedals off and re-welded them onto the ends. So that turned out super nice, uh, good spacing. Next thing I need to do is modify the Pinto pedal assembly, put it back into the corner here, something like that. And uh, I already have my accelerator linkage here, which is really nice. And I was able to modify a bracket uh, that came with the car, redraw the holes over, cut a bunch of metal off, and uh, here's my... Uh, my linkage right now for the accelerator 
so that cable will pull it up, but also uh, pull hard enough at the very end to kick down the second barrel. And then I have the uh, braided line uh, looped around here. I'll drill a hole into the firewall once I make the firewall, and that'll be on the top part of the pedal. That should work out really nice. Next thing is to put this steering wheel on, a really nice wooden one from the 80s that uh, was in the parts pile. And uh, what I need to do is pull off, pull off the steering column. So the idea is that you take off, pry off the horn button, and usually there's a stop nut in here. So you want to take that nut off first. And I have a puller, steering wheel puller kit. And if you like, I'll put an Amazon link in the description. It's like 20 bucks. It's not much money at all for one of these. And uh, the center bar is what I'm going to use. And inside here, there are two tapped holes that are used for steering wheel puller to go on to run the bolts in there. Um, cars prior to, I think it was like 1940 or older Model A's don't have this. So you literally have to pry off the steering wheel from behind. There's different ways of doing that. But uh, pretty much thread the bolt into the hole and it comes with different type bolts. This one seems to work. And grab one of the others out of here. And the idea is this is gonna give you some leverage. And then you're gonna run a bolt down through the center. And that's gonna pull the wheel off. So, and I've got my center bolt, it's going to go in here, like so, and a lot of times you'll hear a loud pop when it breaks loose, and again use free all around that, and then it's becoming easy to go. And my steering wheel is free. All right. Success. And the wheel will just come right off. Ta-da. Very nice. So this is my steering wheel adapter that I got for early Fords. And this was made by Forever Sharp Steering Wheels. And this is specific to Ford. And uh, this is the adapter. And on the back, you see the copper here for the slip ring for the horn button, and then the two wires that go to the horn button. But if I just slide this on here, check that out. Lines up with the spline. Very nice. It also gives you a, a cover. It's gonna go on here, like so. Cover all this up. So that'll go on. And then I should have an adapter to go to six holes. And these new steering wheels, your Grant steering wheels that I've used, stuff like that, this is what you call a six hole. And some of them are five holes, but this is an adapter, kind of a universal adapter that's gonna go on there and the holes will line up. Pop the horn button in the center pretty much done. Wow, check this out. Look how nice this looks compared to the factory one. And the adapter plate, a little spacer. That turned out really super nice. So the next project for today is mounting the radiator. Um, and the manual says you're supposed to use the original Pinto radiator, which I just had rebuilt tanks pulled off and the mice had gotten into it and were living in here. It was really bad. Um, the guy said uh, the smell when he was taking the upper and lower tanks off was just unbearable uh, from the mice remnants and everything. But taking the measurements off the body, um, I did find these brackets in the pile, the parts pile. Um, but they're not going to work. I'm going to have to recut them and modify them to make it work. But the manual doesn't give you any detail. Also, the radiator's too wide to go over the body, or the body to go over the radiator. 
and I'm going to have to cut this off and then uh, just a matter of trial and fitting it and then eventually when I get the brackets done I'm just going to weld them um, there are some bolt holes here I don't know what that's for going into this thick almost half inch thick plate but it'd be easier for me just to weld it across here the brackets so I need to shorten the brackets move them over and then weld them in and hopefully that's going to work I'm going to have an electric fan I took the mechanical fan off there's going to be electric fan pushing air through, and I have plenty of uh, room with the uh, front grill um, to mount an electric fan. Okay, so I got the side brackets mounted onto the side over here, and uh, on both sides. And the distance I need between the frame is 26 inches. And right now, clamped, mocked up, I'm 26 and 5 eighths from the outside to the outside. So, gosh, 5 eighths of an inch, which is like nothing hardly, but it's not going to fit unless I do it. So I'm going to cut this off, this side bracket, shorten this up, weld it back on again. So I will be 26 inches. The radiator is in. The brackets have been modified on either corner, brought in 5 eighths of an inch. And uh, it is very solid. I just have some uh, temporary bolts in here in place, got the hoses in. Next thing I'm going to do is bring the body in and test fit it. I want to make sure that the body clears the radiator on the top. And also, the way I did these brackets, this radiator, disconnect the hose, this radiator should slide straight up um, right off of the angles on this little channel that's in the side. So I need to get the body on and then make sure that my fiberglass ends about here. According to my measurements, I should be good, but I'm gonna check it for real because um, I wanna be able to remove this radiator by sliding it up because once this body goes on, it's on. It's not coming off because I have to fiberglass in the pan to the sides. And once that happens, the body's not gonna come off again. With the help of one of my neighbors, Jerry, here's the body on, and uh, got the trunk set, the liner inside, and uh, got the hood on. And after so many decades of sitting unsupported, the fiberglass kind of bent a little bit, so might have to do some relief cuts and stuff to correct it. But the body is on the frame. I have radiator clearance, which was my main concern today, and right there. I could pull the radiator straight up if I ever have to replace it. That was my main concern. And I am clearing the hood on the edges. So that's good news. Very good news. And the front of the car. See, I got some wood wedges in here right now. But I'm going to have to weld a block onto the front support arms here and raise up this an inch and five eighths, which is no big deal. So I'll just weld a square tube across there. And I think I'm good to go. So uh, looking pretty good here, and the body's in pretty good shape. A couple little dings, but nothing major as far as the gel coat goes. But uh, and then the inside, the pan is lining up with the floor pan. I push this in, and that's all going to be a two by four going in there with fiberglass, and we're fiberglassing in the inside to attach the floor pan to the body, and then the steering wheel's lining up pretty nice here with the dash picture of the car with the hood off and I am clearing the radiator very nice so I can come straight up out with it if it ever needs to be replaced. Um, my clutch mechanism here in the cable, I had to notch this a wee bit over here. Looks like I need to grind just a tad more off and uh, take care of that so I get some more clearance in here. But other than that looks pretty good. Um, and then I need to take a measurement, so I'm going to have to make some kind of block to go across here. And that's about two inches all the way across. 
that I'll need to fill in with something between the fiberglass body and then the support frame. So looking pretty good. So time to get the body back off again. Project for today is making the firewall. It's going to go down in between the motor and, and this metal support here. Uh, it's going to go around the master cylinder and have a hole for the steering column to punch through. And I need to take a bunch of dimensions and then after that uh, make the plate that goes on top of here that's got a recess for the battery box to go into. And I picked up a sheet of 18 gauge steel at my local metal supply place. A uh, sheet of this comes three by five and you're looking at about 75 bucks for a, a sheet. So it has like an oil coating so I'll get some lacquer thinner, wipe it down and then I'll do all my layout lines on it and then I'll show you how I can cut it out with a jigsaw. Have my firewall all laid out and this is where the master cylinder is going to be. So it's going to go up against the wall. I got my transmission uh, hump cut out here and then uh, notched in for the side braces and then the dotted line is I need to bend it uh, probably about 10-15 degrees inward. And then uh, I'll drill some holes. I'll Clico it up with Clico fasteners and then um, I think I'm just going to use some self-tapping screws to anchor it up against the frame. So this is my firewall all made up. Got the arch for the transmission. I got a hole with a grommet for my steering shaft to come down. My master cylinder is right in here. And then later I could drill holes for the heater, hoses to go through with a grommet. But uh, that's looking really good. I disconnected the uh, steering shaft. So let's see if this firewall fits. Nice fit. So now I need to make the uh, cover plate for the battery box and stuff for up above. All right, next is the battery box. And I watched a couple of videos uh, of some of these cars that were built driving around and somebody had a hood open and I saw that the battery was located right here, uh, right behind the firewall up in between oh, the passenger and the driver's side. So what I did is I bought a battery box on Amazon and it just happens to fit like right up in there. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, cut a hole in the top plate. I'll trace it from underneath and then mount it in here directly in the center. And then uh, make some straps or some support to hold the battery box. I think that's going to work out really good. And then I picked up another heater and I've had a couple of these in some builds in the past. Check out my playlist uh, for my Model A build and stuff. And I've used this heater and... Uh, I'll put the link in the description, but this is a nice compact heater. Um, really puts out the air. And what's really cool is the, uh, the flaps open on both sides like that. And then you can turn it to direct the airflow. But I'm going to mount that probably weld a cross bracket across here and then have it kind of like off centered a little bit because I need to take the water inlets from the hot water through the side of the battery box and through the firewall. So I don't want to be directly dead center or else those tubes are going to hit the battery box. So I'll stagger it a little bit and probably put it right in between these two, two brackets. But uh, that's today's project. Battery box is in. I got the cover for it. And uh, it turned out really nice. And uh, working on the heater now. I'll show you how I did the heater. And also the battery box is in, secured across the top. And then I did use an extra one of my gas tank straps, Bennett, to go around. And it's uh, completely looped around. It comes up and then mounts onto the uh, front brace there. So that worked out really good. Um, here's the heater 
And again, I want the water inlet to come down the side of the battery box. So I need to scoot it over towards the passenger side a little bit. But I took a piece of strap steel, bolted it on on both sides. And then uh, the car already had these support brackets. I guess this is for the dash, but that's going to be a puzzle for another day, what that's for. But uh, looking really good. And I'm staggered enough where I'm clearing the water pipes down the side out the firewall in, into the engine. And I'll put a valve in between. But uh, last thing to do is to weld these corners and uh, call it quits. So if we look at my uh, scratch list, got quite a bit done. And uh, heater, you could scratch that one off. And uh, cover battery box. So making a lot of progress. I should have the electric fan in today. That's easy to do, it's just some uh, tie straps. And then I'll work on the seat tracks and the buckets. I have the seat tracks that came in and then a little car block off plate that I need to make. And then after that, I can mount the ignition onto the firewall, the DuraSpark ignition module. And uh, looking pretty good. So I think that's enough for the week. It's Friday afternoon. And uh, I'm gonna try to take uh, the weekend off here and not fool with this thing. But uh, anyway, uh, appreciate everybody uh, subscribing. And if you haven't, hit the subscribe button down below and uh, please share this with your friends and again I'm trying to make these a, a teaching video on how to do stuff and uh, keep your comments coming stuff I've done right stuff I've done wrong appreciate everybody's feedback uh, hit the like button but uh, so let's go ahead and wrap it up for the week and we'll pick up again on Monday and thanks for watching